In this video, we're going to learn how to make ammonia hydroxide from urine. Some information about this, it's not a total surprise that urine contains urea at a rate of about 1 to 2 percent. So if you have a gallon of pee, you have somewhere between 45 and 60 grams of urea in that pee. Most of urine, of course, is water, and the remaining amount between the 1 to 2 percent urea and the water are minerals, creatinine, ions, etc. A bunch of stuff, phosphorus, sodium, potassium, etc. You can convert urea into ammonia, the gas NH3, that mixes with water to produce ammonia hydroxide, named here. And this is the same stuff that you buy over the counter. Any ammonia that you buy to clean or whatever, it's really ammonia hydroxide with the formula NH4OH. The simplest method to release ammonia gas from urea is to use sodium hydroxide. And it goes as follows, NH2CO, NH2, which is urea. You can already see on both sides of the carbon and oxygen, you have what is akin to ammonia molecules, plus 2NaOH yields 2NH3 gas, plus Na2CO3, which is sodium carbonate. This remains behind in the solution. So essentially, when you're mixing your urine and sodium hydroxide with the urea in the urine, of course, you're producing the ammonia gas, which is getting released, and the sodium carbonate that's produced is soluble still in water, so it remains back in here in the primary solution that you started to mix. The reaction between urea and sodium hydroxide works best between 60 and 100 degrees Celsius, which is around 140 to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So in order to get the best reaction, we're going to need to heat things up. The materials that we need is urine, a gallon. This will be mine, of course, and I'm donating it to science. Sodium hydroxide, 225 grams. I'll go through how I ended up with this in the video. Water, two allotments of 100 milliliters, and a hot plate to heat things up. First thing we need to do is take our gallon of urine and drive off as much water as we can. So that's going to take some time, but it's necessary to reduce it to about 200 milliliters. And in that 200 milliliters, you now have approximately 20 to 25% urea that we can mix with the sodium hydroxide. It's obviously a lot more concentrated. Here's our setup. Uh, we're going to have two plates here uh, with magnetic stirrers. This first one's a hot plate. Uh, we're going to have the sodium hydroxide in there. I'll be making that at approximately 80 degrees Celsius because of what we learned here. The reaction occurs best around that area. And then there will be uh, a stopper, a hose, a rubber hose that comes down into another flask that also has a magnetic stirrer. And the ammonia gas that's driven off will come up and over like this. And we'll keep this just above the water so that there's no back wash necessary. And this flask will be in ice. And because it's in ice, the water will be cold and ammonia dissolves extremely well in cold water, much better than warm water. We have our sodium hydroxide solution made at around 80 degrees C. We're going to pour our 200 milliliters of dehydrated urine in around 50 to 100 milliliter aliquots into this flask right here, uh, watching so that it doesn't boil over because that can happen. And uh, of course, when we're done pouring it all in, we're going to put the stopper in it, which has the rubber hose. As the ammonia comes over here, into this one it'll of course come through here this will be unstopped it looks like there's a stopper there but i probably will tape it or something but the top of this flask will be open and then the ammonia gas can come in here close to the water which will be swirling about and dissolve in there and that's how we're going to get our ammonia hydroxide solution from urine i started collecting the urine a bit ago so i'm ready to go with this let's go do it this is not milk it's a gallon of my own pee that we're going to use as another method to make some concentrated ammonia I poured out one liter of that pee into this one liter beaker and we're going to heat this here until it gets down to maybe 50 to 100 milliliters and I'm going to continue to do that until we've uh, boiled down all of the urine. I do have to say that this smells really bad, but that's the last comment I'll make on it. I am doing this on a pretty windy day, which should help. It has a long way to go, but I really have to watch it foam from building up too much and spilling over. Foam turned out not to be a real problem. Slow, but sure. Well, we finally reached our goal. Now that this is cooled down, you can see how dark it got. I'll be doing this for the rest of the gallon, and then I'll be back. I've collected all of that uh, boiled urine from the one gallon in this jar here. There's about three to four hundred milliliters here I'm guessing forgive me for saying it looks like a dark beer but this needs to be boiled down even more to about 200 milliliters so I'm gonna go ahead and do that I'll be transferring the already dehydrated urine into this beaker here 
to further boil off some water. Turn that on and let it run till it's under 200 milliliters. The urine has boiled down to 200 milliliters, almost right on the money there. So I'm gonna turn this off here and we're gonna move on to the next part of the experiment. This is a graph I made of the sodium hydroxide solubility in water at different temperatures. On the x-axis is the degree Celsius, and on the y-axis is the solubility of sodium hydroxide measured in grams per liter. Before I go further, I want to let you know that the line that I drew here is not 100% accurate. It is accurate between these two points, which are known solubility, solubilities of sodium hydroxide in water. This one at 0 degrees Celsius is 418 grams per liter. This one is 3,370 grams per liter at 100 degrees C. But the actual line is curved. And the reason for that is as you heat up water and then add sodium hydroxide to it, the reaction is exothermic. And because of that, the internal heat actually pushes outwards. It pushes the reaction backwards. So the external heat has to be raised higher to actually get the solubility to go higher. Now, in general, the more heat you add in the water, the more solubility you do get with sodium hydroxide, as you can see just comparing these two points here. But the curve in the line is real because of what happens with an exothermic reaction and when you're trying to heat it. I expect the water that um, I'll be heating to add the sodium hydroxide to to be between 70 and 90 degrees Celsius. So I chose 80 degrees here as a nice median. And if we go up 80 degrees Celsius over to the y-axis, we end up very close to 2,750 grams per liter. Now, it's above it slightly, but considering the other unknown factors here, including that my pencil lines might not be perfectly straight, etc., we're going to go with 2,750 grams per liter. Now, that's per liter, and we want to know for milliliters, so we divide it by 1,000. If we divide it by 1,000, we end up with 2.75 grams per milliliter of sodium hydroxide that will dissolve in one milliliter of water at 80 degrees Celsius. Since I plan on using 200 milliliters of water, if you multiply 2.75 grams per milliliter times 200, you'll end up with 550 grams of sodium hydroxide that will dissolve in 200 milliliters of water at 80 degrees Celsius. And that's my final answer, and that's what we're going with. So we just decided to use 550 grams of sodium hydroxide and dissolve it in 200 milliliters of 80 degrees C water, and I'm sure that will work. Um, However, looking at how much I have here, I'm going to be using most of my sodium hydroxide on this one experiment. Now, urea makes up 1 to 2% of urine, and of course, we have dehydrated that and um, brought that number up. But I still am going to figure that that 200 milliliters of urine we have is not all urea. Um, maybe 20 to 25% of it is. So I think what I'm going to do is go to 100 milliliters of water and use 225 grams of sodium hydroxide in that water. The percentage and ratios are the same, it's just a little less. Who knows, maybe this will turn out to be the better way to do it in the end. 225 grams of sodium hydroxide pre-weighed. So I've got 100 milliliters of water in there heating up. Uh, it's in around 71, 72 degrees Celsius. It's not gonna be ever at exactly 80 probably, but we're in the range, so I'm gonna start adding the uh, sodium hydroxide. There's no reason to do it slowly, so I'm going to add it as quick as I can. Better use that. And done. It doesn't matter if the temperature went way up, it just makes it more soluble. I'm going to bring it down here just a bit. It looks like most of the sodium hydroxide has dissolved, so that's really good. I'm sure it's very concentrated. And then on this side over here is another flask with 100 milliliters of water that's being stirred. And the rubber tube there, which comes up from above here and will come from the uh, urine sodium hydroxide mix, empties in here. very gently start to add our urine this can bubble over and uh, that's bad because you got hot sodium hydroxide and urine mixed together pouring everywhere so 
just a little bit at a time. Of course, some urine is going to, uh, I'm sorry, some ammonia is going to escape here, but uh, we'll just have to not worry about that. And the last bit. All right, we're capping this. I'm gonna turn the uh, spin rate up again just a little bit to mix it better and get more of that ammonia gas coming out of the top here. You can see the sodium hydroxide and the urea and the urine mixing, creating bubbles there. I'm going to run it until the bubbles stop, but we can follow the ammonia gas up and over here, across the top, and right down in here to this flask, which has 100 milliliters of distilled water, and of course it's ice to absorb the ammonia gas as best as possible. So it's going to run for a little while here. I'll be back. We're about 20 minutes in here, and we can still see a lot of ammonia gas bubbles being produced, so I'm going to keep going. 45 minutes in here and the bubbling has basically stopped, so I'm gonna call it quits. I'm gonna turn this down, stop the magnetic stir, turn the heat down, off and off. On this end too, we'll turn it down. It needs to be dismantled, of course, and we'll figure out what kind of ammonia percentage we have. We have here our 100 milliliters of ammonia hydroxide solution that we just made. And as you can see, ammonia hydroxide, of course, is basic. So one of the simplest tests we can do to make sure that we made the right thing is to take a piece of pH paper. And I'm just going to set it in here and let the fumes get to it. And you can see how fast that happened. So we clearly can see we made a basic solution. And considering everything else we did, I think we can be assured that it is ammonia. The other simple test we can do is take the ammonia hydroxide solution we made and some hydrochloric acid. This happens to be 34%. And the fumes from both of them, when mixed, will produce ammonia chloride, which is a gas and shows up as white smoke. And you can clearly see that being made. Nice.